In this presentation, we will be taking a look at bank feeds, deposits, and inflows within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We're currently in the QuickBooks sample file. We're in the home page. We've got the open windows open. The way to open the open windows is to select the view tab and select the open windows list. We're going to go back into the bank feeds here. So to do that, we're going to select the banking dropdown. We're going to go to the bank feeds and we're going to go to the bank feed center. Within the bank feed center, we're going to go to the second account, the checking account. And we have the item here saying that there are a transaction list, meaning we have some transactions that we still need to assign. So we're going to go to the transaction list. We're left now with a deposit here and a payment that we can allocate out. So we're going to focus in on this deposit now. So we have a deposit here. Uh, same kind of information we can think of, of course, but now we're talking about the other side. Rather than us making a payment, we have the deposit. We have to think about, you know, what are the kind of things that we can have with a problem with a deposit. One, could it be a duplicate deposit? We got to make sure it lines up and we got to make sure it lines up to an invoice and receive payment if we're doing that full service kind of process within the system. If, on the other hand, we're just saying that all the deposits are basically income, then we can kind of assign all the deposits as income if we're just using a cash basis in that format. But if we're using the full service within the system, entering invoices, entering receive payments, then we got to be careful that we don't duplicate the, the deposit and that we are matching it up to the payments necessary. So we've got a similar drop down. We've, we've got the deposit. There's not going to be a number typically because we don't have the check number. Uh, we have the deposit, the, the payee. Now, again, if it's electronic, we're more likely to have information on the depositor, which is really nice. So if we're talking about transactions where we're getting electronic payments, then it's, it, this is a great system because QuickBooks will I'll be able to memorize the depositor. And when we set up rules, then it can basically say, oh, that depositor, we need to put that to this particular account. And the same with the checks. We haven't been able to do that as much in this example because there's generic names. But if, if they were uh, not generic names, then we would be able to set up rules and memorize those accounts. So we'll talk a little bit more about the rules as we go, but just note that QuickBooks will typically ask us if, if, if it has the conditions to go on, such as the name of who's depositing and the account, then it, it'll typically ask us, hey, do you want us to do the same thing to the next transaction? In other words, do you want us to set up a rule to do that? And that'll make the transactions in the future much easier. We've got the account. We're going to clearly need to assign an account, typically an income account, we would think, if it was a deposit class, if it applies, and payment here. And we're, of course, on the deposit side. We have the actions drop down. Once again, we have a quick add. We can't really do that with an, an account without an account, however. If we do so, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to, we could force it, and it's going to go to an undeposited or an uncategorized income, as we saw with the expense side. So we won't do that again here. But uh, you don't really want to do that because if you, if you do, then you're going to end up with this account on the income statement called uncategorized income. And if you try to do your taxes with that, then, I mean, the IRS doesn't like to see uncategorized income. So, but, so it'd be better if we allocate it here and then have QuickBooks be able to recognize and memorize that transaction, set a rule for it, and then be able to assign it every time within the bank feed. Add more details is typically what we're going to do, just like we did with the checks. We'll add the account name and whatnot and finish this thing up match to an existing transaction would mean that if we're trying to match it up to a transaction that's already outstanding and ignore would mean that possibly there's already uh, a transaction out there and we, we don't want to duplicate it or for whatever reason we want to uh, ignore basically delete in essence the transaction here and not put it into the quickbooks system so we're going to go to the, let's try to think about the matching uh, an existing transaction. To do that, let's go to the home page. We're going to go to the home page. And within the home page, notice what normally happens is we've got to create invoice typically, then we receive payments, and then we're going to record the deposit. Now, if the deposit has already been recorded, then QuickBooks should be able to match that up and say, hey, the deposit's already there. But if we record the deposit in a way that isn't grouped as the same way that is in the system, in the bank system, it's possible that the we have duplicate deposits. 
if it is the same, meaning all QuickBooks really have to go off of is if there's a depositor and the dollar amount. So if it can match up the dollar amount, then it should be able to say, hey, this looks like another uh, deposit and match it out. But if th there is an amount that uh, there are two types of deposits into the system that we entered in two deposits and it goes in the bank in one deposit, then we got to be careful on those types of transactions. So let's go here and say we're going to receive a payment. And we're going to receive a payment and we're going we're gonna to pick a customer. So I'm just going to pick the first customer again. And we're going to say that it was a, we received a check. And we're going to say that the payment amount is going to match exactly here, 2080.11, which is the amount that we got from, uh, that we saw on the automatic deposit within the bank feed. <laughs> so, and we're not going to match it up. There's nothing to match out because I don't have an invoice matched out. So I'm going to say this is a deposit. So the customer gave us a deposit before we entered the invoice, like a prepayment an uncategorized income, unearned income. And so let's save and close this. So we'll say save and close. And it says it's going to create a credit. That's fine. I'm going to say OK. Now we're going to go over to our transaction list. So we'll go to the transaction list. And I'm going to select this item. So the thing is, I know that that deposit then is now in accounts receivable. So it's in accounts receivable. And I'd like to be able to match it up there. I'm going to select this item and say match to an existing transaction. And we have these items here. We've got the payments, the transfers, and the receipts. And if I look at the all time here, and I go up, it, I'm not seeing that particular transaction for 2080. So if I scroll down, I don't see it here. So I need to be careful there. I'm going to close this back out. And I know if I go back to my home page, that that, pay, that that amount is kind of showing here. So I know that this four items represent that there's a receive payment and a create sales receipt. If I select that item to the, to the record deposit, when, I, when we enter the sale, the receive payment, remember, that's going to reduce accounts receivable and that's going to record uh, it into undeposited funds. So now we need to basically deposit it into the bank, which is what's happening in the bank feeds. So if we go to the record deposits then, these are going to be the items that are there. It's in, it's in there twice, but here's the item that we want. Now, note that we could make a deposit depending on how we group these together. And that's the problem, of course, with us depositing them into the system. How are we going to match it up? And then how is it going to match up with what uh, the system knows is there? So the system may not be picking up or be able to pick it up because, because the grouping of the deposits may differ than what, what the bank feed will be. So we know that these are there, and if we're going to say, hey, there, there's a deposit for 2080, and these are outstanding, then we can go ahead and make the deposit. I'm going to check that one off and say, OK, and I'm going to say save and close. So this will be a deposit, taking it out of undeposited funds, putting it into the checking account, which would now result in a duplicate. So we're going to say save and close. If we go back to the transaction list, then it's going to say, OK, we found that deposit now. So now it automatically turned it into a matched deposit because it found uh, where the last one was and matched it up. If we go back to the uh, check register banking and we go to use register, go to the checking account and we then find that deposit. I put it up here on uh, 12 15 23. I'm going to delete it now and see what that does. So we're going to right click on it just on this DEP and delete that deposit. So delete the deposit. OK. And then we go back to the transaction list. If this deposit is not matching up with any other type of deposit, then we would go here to the select item and typically go to the add more details. Within the add more details, we're going to have the detail of the check here. So or the deposit that we have not much information. Now note up top that we do have these these payments. So here's the undeposited funds and here are open invoices. So if we had undeposited funds that we want to match this off to, which we had just set up, so here's the 2080, we can just populate this, uh, click on this item, and it'll populate for us, taking it out of undeposited funds. So this item will then, what this will do, of course, is do that last step of the transaction, basically making the deposit into the bank, taking it out of undeposited funds and putting it into the bank. If we unclick that and we went to open invoices, and if we were matching this up to an open invoice, 
the open invoices, debiting accounts receivable, and crediting revenue. And this would, in essence, put it into the bank, skipping the undeposited funds, uh, putting it into the checking account, and, uh, and decreasing the accounts receivable. So in other words, it really depends on what kind of system we're using. If we're entering invoices into the system and we're entering the receive payments, we got to be very careful that we're matching these up as we record the deposits. We got to make sure that we're grouping the deposits in the same way that they'll be seen in the bank statement so that we can do that matching. If, on the other hand, we have a very simplistic system where we are just waiting to get the information from the bank, we're not invoicing through QuickBooks and we're not recording receive payments or deposits, until we get the data from the bank and then we're just basically going to take any deposit and record it as revenue most likely because all deposits then would be revenue unless we put it in there or unless we got a loan or something like that then we would then that would be a more simplistic system and every time we get money we're just going to we're just going to record all deposits in essence as revenue so in this case so that would mean that you would go down here and just record the receive from and you might not even know who exactly you received from if you're just recording the deposits and assuming their revenue unless we put it in there or took a loan out. Then you would put the revenue account here and receive from just uh, a, a name, you know, just income. And then we would have just the um, account here, the revenue account. Here, of course, we're going to let's try matching it up. We're going to match this up. It's going to say matched now. So we matched it to that payment and we're going to say add to QuickBooks. Now, it's going to give us this item here, which is going to say, hey, do you want us to do this? We, we have enough data here for us to say we, we know where this deposit is coming from. We have the dollar amount. We have enough data for us to make a rule so that we can basically do this automatically in the future. Now, this particular rule may not be the one we want to keep. It says here, if description uh, contains deposit, has deposit in the description, rename payee to that payee and categorize account to undeposited funds in this case that's probably not what we want because we might have a deposit from somebody else named deposit but a lot of times this is how the rules will basically be in place and this help this helps a lot with the payment side which typically there'll be a lot more payments than deposits so that's really good where we will have be able to match out the payee uh, and possibly the dollar amount even and they'll be able to set up a rule in order to, to put the system in place if you want to keep that rule uh, you can so you can keep it there or you can edit the rule in some way make it more specific to be more correct Or you can ignore the rule which probably what we want to do in this case and we'll say okay, and it'll record that one For more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info